Agroecology is a new way of conceiving how food is to be produced. It is based on the idea that instead of domesticating nature, mastering it and reducing it to something simple, we should accept it is complex. We should use this complexity as an asset and we should diversify uh, production by combining different plants with trees, with animals, in order to reconstitute at the field level the interactions between these different elements of nature. Over the past uh, 50 or 60 years, the tendency in the European Union has been to reward economies of scale, large-scale production, mechanization, monocultures, in the name of increasing production and efficiency. And that has been extremely damaging for um, the health of the soils, for the preservation of biodiversity, for even the health of consumers because they were more and more accustomed to consuming heavily processed foods and farmers themselves have become input providers for the agri-food processors and it is a system that is now um, showing its limits and that must be reformed significantly. And therefore there is a mismatch between the professed intention of the successive reforms of the common agricultural policy, which is to green it, to make it more environmentally sustainable, and the signals that are sent, the, in the economic incentives that are introduced by the system of subsidies that basically reward large-scale producers. And for this reason, I think it's, um, um, the common agricultural policy is in need of, of a much more systematic reform that would reward producers, that provide environmental services, that support really um, the development of agrobiodiversity in on European farms, but we are still very far from that vision. We have some interesting initiatives that are taken today to promote agroecology, and for example, the French um, uh, law uh, that was adopted uh, to promote the groupement d'intérêt économique et environnemental. Uh, and to support agroecological transitions is an interesting example in this, in this regard. But the problem is you cannot simply focus on the side of production. So we need a revolution in how we eat. Gradually this is taking place. More and more parents are concerned about the health of their children. Schools are trying to provide food in school canteens that is healthier. More and more people are becoming vegetarians or at least reducing their consumption of meat. They want something else. Agroecology should not be reduced to a series of agronomic techniques such as agroforestry, uh, the use of leguminous plants to fertilize the soils, the use of small animals to fertilize the soils, uh, harvesting uh, rainwater and so on. Agroecology is also about a different relationship to food and a different way of organizing food systems. It's important to realize that agroecology uh, is highly dependent on the local context. The local resources, uh, the quality of the soils, uh, the type of tree that you can grow, um, the type of combination of different plants that you can imagine, and therefore, it is not very easy to present agroecology on a European scale, for example, as one single recipe that should be applied everywhere. It's possible to deal with it through different points of view. What are the scientific approach and the practices linked to agroecology? What is the social aspect? How agroecology can be taught? In Europe, each country has its own definition of agroecology. In Italy, people have used agroecology for many years. Their technical approach highlights the importance of thinking at the agricultural system level. It is also interesting to see how different stakeholders work together to develop agroecology at a higher level. So the Italian way of doing agroecology has four many components. The first component is tradition. The second component is ecology. The third component is system thinking. And the fourth component is system practice. 
In Italy, uh, we have uh, uh, an old uh, academic tradition in agricultural sciences. And uh, the first uh, agronomy who taught in that period was uh, uh, Pietro Cupari, uh, who uh, can be uh, today be considered as the, the first proto-agroecologist. He was able to establish a theory that we can call the, the theory of the organic farm, where he regarded a farm as a living body. He was able to establish at least three important and main components. And these components were crops, livestock, and soil. In the same way, when you consider the landscape, you can consider the, la the landscape as a mosaic of farms. And so you can identify that between and among farms in, in a territory, th there must be some uh, 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 linkages, some uh, kind of relationships that uh, today uh, uh, can be identified in the new concept of biodistricts. The agroecological uh, transition in Italy is very connected with the territorial organic farming development. A biodistrict or ecoregion is a territory where producers, consumers and public administrators work together for the sustainable management of natural resources. In 2014 uh, was held the international network of uh, ecoregions and actually in Europe we have about 20 ecoregions. If you have to organize uh, uh, according to the theory of organic farm uh, a kind of management of, of the farm, you need to increase biodiversity in several ways. It's important to understand what, what kind of sequence of crops can enhance the, the soil organic matter. You have to establish these virtual circuits in, in, in a farm. In this way you can establish sustainability at the farm level and at the field level. Agroecology is linked to organic farming. It is also linked to the conservation of traditional skills and knowledge. In the Salas Gardens, different families grow their own food with ancient practices. The Salas Garden has an area of 800 hectares divided into little family plots and each piece of land is served by a source of water. Every family makes his own plot with different vegetables. And this system is a system that was like used 1,000 years ago. Our work is to keep the seeds, the ancient seeds. The gardeners I make are making a research of all the seeds. They made a bank of uh, fruits, uh, seeds. Um, with this bank of fruits, uh, what they do is every year they plant a different uh, kind of fruit. So they can uh, preserve different uh, kind of apple and in our bank almost 90 different uh, variety of apple, 90 pears and more than uh, 50 um, cherries, apricot and uh, so on. The water irrigates uh, the grounds through a system of major and minor ditches, medieval ditches. And the farm, uh, they just uh, use this system with uh, this canal that goes uh, uh, on the side of the plot and they uh, break, so they do many little canals uh, inside uh, the plot, inside the vegetables. Farmers use traditional practices and installations. They are respectful of the environment and allow agroecological management of natural resources. 
It is also important to involve different stakeholders in agroecology and to educate them, such as producers, consumers and so on. In Slovenia, lots of agricultural practices are traditional. During years, people work to adapt their system to the environment and to develop these practices. In Slovenia, uh, if we think about agroecological practices, we have uh, a lot of traditional knowledge still practiced in, uh, in the field or at the farms. And uh, uh, these kind of uh, traditions are still used, uh, especially on part-time farms. There are small farms where farmer also works somewhere else. And uh, they don't really use uh, new technologies a lot because they're expensive and they're sometimes also complicated, but they use a lot of traditional approaches in uh, managing the farm. The benefits of uh, agroecology for Slovenia could be numerous uh, because uh, it would uh, enable to formalize some uh, traditional approaches uh, of farming and uh, include them into the day-to-day -day activity of farmers, which would uh, be, uh, so in this case, more sustainable. So we have, for example, good uh, developed sustainable beekeeping uh, approaches and uh, activities. Uh, there is um, a good uh, traditional and still active tradition of uh, preparing some uh, meat products on farms. We have a tradition of use of wood as a renewable so uh, source of uh, material and it was passed from uh, generation to generation in this traditional way uh, through, um, through the family or, or uh, from, from neighbor to neighbor. This transfer was interrupted. Now we, we want to do it uh, another way through uh, formal, informal or uh, non-formal uh, education uh, where the knowledge is which would also be uh, scientifically proved, would uh, be passed to, to people, to interested people, who would like to practice it then. This traditional knowledge is linked to agroecology. It is important to teach it to farmers by working in cooperation with them on the evolution of the system to agroecology. Thanks to different educational ways, interested people can learn this knowledge alternative practices and other lifestyle linked to nature. Polygon Dole is one of these educational places. Polygon Dole, it is in municipality Polchane. Uh, it is the area only with one hectare and a half. And on the polygon, we have three uh, alternative uh, buildings. The Hobbit house uh, with the temperature uh, 15 degrees uh, in whole year and it is like our place for production what we here uh, produce and like a meeting room for the people and this is the region of the production then we have greenhouse in winter we have all our production in greenhouse uh, only with this natural production, but important it is we used the layer. First is the wood, then is the sheep wool, and after then it is the soil. For evapotranspiration, then stay a water a uh, lot of time there. And yurt, yurt is Mongolian house, and is completely from uh, uh, the natural materials, uh, wood and, uh, and uh, wool. Permaculture, it's not only the methods for producing some things for eating, but it's like uh, planning how can you live next 10 or 20 years and how must you connect together what the nature has, it means natural potential, with your wishes. 
Uh, the name Polygon Dole, it's like educational polygon uh, because here we uh, develop uh, new approaches for different characteristics of soul and show to the people how can they or with the soul, with atmosphere characteristic, with exposition and so, connect together all of these geographical characteristics uh, to produce the eating for yourself. So uh, knowledge about environment, it is very important, but in school it is only, only to understand it through information, but not from the investigation. And here we want to learn investigation environment. So we see young generation want and need to help practical experience in a real situation and it will be, I think, uh, like independent, self-sufficiency generation. Thanks to the knowledge of the environment, it is possible to develop a system adapted to the natural condition and to your wishes. Practical experience and investigation develop critical mind and autonomy, so people can set in place a system to become food self-sufficient. In Lithuania, agroecology can be illustrated by the development of eco-villages. In order to change their way of life to be more independent and self-sufficient, people create small communities living in those villages. This place is Kardoka Eco Village. The main idea is to go to live in the nature for the family was to find better conditions for family, better food, better water, better weather. <laughs> Eco villages appear in Lithuania approximately 10 years ago and now it's about five strong uh, eco-villages. They are not big, five families or seven families. All this movement is that all the families are independent and uh, want to create their sustainable life in the nature. There are 13 plots in our uh, village. Every family had from one hectare to two and a half hectares. The straw bale house is uh, quite simple. It is carcass wooden house, fulfill it with straw bale inside as isolation material. All construction and uh, isolation is closed by plaster made from the clay and uh, gravel. We use uh, permaculture principles, uh, principles in our garden. We do mixed seeding of the plants in all the grass what we uh, cut around the house in our yard. We use for the garden mulching, and we find a lot of new things what we can do, uh, take experience to build open house, take experience new activity. So it's a place for realization. In those places, people try new practices like permaculture. They adapt their practices to the environment in order to produce with the nature. On a different scale, organic farming is developing in Lithuania. Farmers like Valentina Genis set up agroecological practices in order to maintain the natural supports of production, like the soil, for example. I understand agroecology as maintenance of the soil. I'm in favor of zero tillage agriculture, where no plot is used for soil cultivation. I also use a multi-species cropping system, which makes it possible to keep an agricultural field green for 365 days per year. Due to climate warming, the autumn and spring periods these days tend to be longer. The method of zero tillage is a way of growing crops from year to year without disturbing the soil through tillage just protecting the soil from leaching of nutrients. 
In this field, I harvest crops with a cutter. It means that I only harvest the grains winnowing them from the upright stems, which are later pressed to the ground with a roller. Such a method enables to carry out an anti-erosive function of the soil by protecting it from soil leaching and ensuring moisture preservation. There are continuous processes going on within the soil, regardless of the season, be it autumn, winter or spring, what we need in the soil is the coexistence of all together a live plant, which is a supplier of sugar, and the dead plant, such as pathogenic fungi. In such a way, equilibrium is formed between the so-called good and bad guys. If the dead matter starts to accumulate, like, for example, during tillage, all processes stop, spores emerge and destruction starts. It's imperative to maintain the positive balance in the soil. A multi-species cropping system is a complex system of cultivated and uncultivated plants. Cultural plants have to be integrated in such a way that some of them are regarded as the primary crops and the other crops serve as auxiliary ones. Crops tend to carry out an overrunning function in such a way help each other grow. My plan for the future is not to leave any debt to my grandchildren. I am talking about the soil-related activities. The situation could be compared to the recipe of making soup. Even if the same ingredients are used, the taste of soup made by two hostesses will differ. However, I always use one basic ingredient. That is, I add a touch of love to whatever I do. In order to develop agroecological practices, it is important to know how the agrosystem works and what the interactions between the different elements, soil, plants, animals and so on are. Austria has a strong organic farming tradition in which we find agroecology at different levels, such as research and social levels. At the University of Natural Resources and Life Sciences, researchers work on new practices to enhance the link between plants and soil and the role of semi-natural habitat into an agricultural system. Agroecology in Austria uh, is mainly about, on the one hand, biodiversity, functional biodiversity, and on the other side, uh, especially in organic farming, uh, it is on uh, nutrient cycling and uh, closing cycles on the farms. Functional biodiversity, it's mainly on um, pest control, on the one hand by beneficials, and on the other hand, uh, pollination, pollination by uh, honeybees and by wild bees. For testing the efficiency, uh, the effects of uh, natural structural elements like hedges, like weed strips, like grass strips, um, we do some testing of uh, the vegetation in these uh, uh, landscape structures. Uh, they test uh, the fauna and also uh, they are testing the effect into the fields, how far the effect is reaching. For example, there's organic uh, pea growing and uh, for these peas uh, there's uh, in many years usually some problem with aphids and there's uh, this potential of uh, beneficials coming inside the fields from uh, the margins, from the field strips, from the hedges and they control the peas and in some years this is very effective. And uh, regarding uh, the other aspect which is mainly important in organic farming and low input farming systems, um, it is about um, closing nutrient cycles, especially on the farms without livestock stockless organic farming uh, where the nutrient cycles are not closed and nutrients are exported with the commodities, uh, with the products to the cities 
especially here in Austria, there is uh, this approach of uh, source separated collection of uh, compost, which means already at the very beginning of the chain in the cities there is a separation of the organic material and the rest of the waste and only the organic material then is uh, prepared as compost from the cities and this uh, is controlled for uh, pollutants and then if it's okay can be applied to the farms. It is important to think of agroecology at different levels, field, farm and region. The farmers have to see agroecology as an additional source of income, producing not only high quality food, but also high quality landscape and environment. In Austria, agroecology can be approached with a technical point of view, and it's really linked to organic farming. But the social aspect is also important, for example, with a strong relationship between producers and consumers, as at Adama Biohof. Adama is an organic agriculture situated in the, the Machfeld, close to Vienna, and um, produces organic vegetable. And in order to keep uh, a large diversity of plants and a large diversity of uh, crops that we grow, we soon started to direct market to customers in the greater area of Vienna with a boxing scheme. And this gives us the possibility to have diverse products that we uh, bring directly to the households and to the people and also have this diversity on the fields that keeps the agroecological system uh, very stable and also gives us the possibility to have legumes in our crop rotations to uh, bring nutrients uh, and organic matter to the soil. Adama Bierhof uh, in 1997 converted to organic agriculture and soon they had uh, the question how to sell all the diversity they produce on their organic uh, farm to the customers. We deliver about 5,000 customers every week in the greater area of Vienna with uh, these organic boxes ranging from organic vegetables uh, directly from our fields. Uh, also up to um, bread or meat or milk products that we get from farmers in the area around us. So this is kind of a link from Adama Biohof to the customers directly as also a link from other farmers in our area directly to customers uh, instead of marketing uh, over supermarkets for example. Here at Adama we uh, use and produce renewable energy in terms of electricity. So we have uh, photovoltaics um, here on our farm on the roofs, about uh, 100 uh, kilowatts peak um, and we produce about 70% of uh, the electricity that we need here uh, ourselves. This is a future goal and vision of us here at Adama to uh, make people more aware how important it is to eat organic uh, farmed food and um, to become available also for people who have today the issue uh, that they don't get it easily. In this example, the different approaches of agroecology highlight the developed practices and knowledge to produce high quality food and the importance to alert customers on the actual food and environmental issues. Thanks to the public policies, farmers create groups or associations to set in place innovative practices and rethink the production systems together. Emergence Bio uh, is an uh, association of producers uh, started in uh, 2015 on the Milvache Plateau uh, in the center of France uh, at an altitude of uh, 900 meters. The group is an association of uh, free producers. All of uh, the produce is organic. Our goal was to produce uh, food uh, sustainably. Uh, to this end, uh, we have uh, constructed a mechanism. We had uh, to face the construction and the startup of uh, the mechanism, uh, a distribution system, a dryer and a storm water recovery and treatment system. Uh, 
The methanizer allows uh, the recovery of uh, energy, heat and nutrients uh, from animal, manure and uh, agricultural residue. The methanizer also facilitates uh, and increases the recovery of uh, nutrients as a uh, digestate uh, uh, final product of uh, methanization uh, process uh, is used as a fertilizer on uh, our crops and prairies. It is uh, recovered in uh, our project um, and uh, the use of this uh, it enables the creation of uh, new local jobs and activities such as uh, market farming and poultry raising. As the food processing entity is shared among us, uh, we have optimized uh, its use uh, so uh, that uh, all of uh, our produce uh, can be transformed on site. It is uh, reducing transportation, uh, environmental impact and cost. The resulting produce is uh, either directly uh, eaten in your local restaurant or uh, sold locally directly to consumer. Our plan for the future is to work to adjusting the system, uh, especially uh, our agricultural practices. We also want to make uh, our project accessible to the people uh, to promote agroecology and a circular economy. Thanks to the group, it's easier to innovate, change the system and take risks. Another goal of those groups is to show the innovations and to communicate about it among the other farmers so they can develop it too. Depending on the country, agroecology can be related to innovative practices in order to produce with the nature and preserve it, to a formalization of traditional practices, and to a science helping to understand how the agroecosystem works. Within an agroecosystem, ecosystem managed by farmers, we can meet a lot of interactions between uh, physical elements like uh, soil, for example, and living beings like uh, microbes, uh, animals, domestic animals and wild animals, and vegetations, uh, wild plants and crops, uh, and so on. When taking account the result of agroecology, farmers, when they implement their own farming systems, try to diversify. Diversify their cropping system, their animal raising systems, they try to associate them. They can, for example, associate uh, cropping systems with uh, animal raising systems. They can combine trees with uh, annual crops. And uh, when combining trees with uh, annual crops, they can raise uh, mycorrhizae uh, fungus, for example. They try to, for example, produce manure and use this manure in order to fertilize their soil by biological means. When implementing this kind of farming system, farmers uh, try to improve the biodiversity within the soil with more bacteria, more useful fungus, more earthworm and more humus. Uh, in the soil. And the soil becomes more fertile without uh, chemical uh, inputs. Without implementing uh, chemical inputs, farmers can protect, can preserve the biodiversity of the agroecosystems. They can preserve uh, the beneficial insects, the useful insects, uh, for example, bees, uh, ladybugs. Uh, cries up uh, and so on. This kind of agricultural farming systems can reduce green gas emissions and they can also enhance the carbon sequestrations within soils. When confronting this uh, more hazardous climate, farmers have to implement more resilient farming systems. That means more diversified climbing, uh, farming systems. And these more resilient farming systems can help farmers to face the price volatility. So, it's very important to teach agroecology 
because the challenge is help the young generations to implement this kind of farming systems, the agroecological farming systems, not like the industrial agriculture like before. Concerning agroecology, farmers have to think at the system level to include all the elements and the interactions. To teach agroecology, it is important to let the people study their environment, experiment by themselves and develop their own systems. Agroecology is not just a science and innovative practices. It can be related to an evolution of the way of life linked to nature. Moreover, there is also an evolution of the food production and distribution systems to include the wishes of the consumers, like full self-sufficiency, for example. There is a social aspect linked to this topic. So, uh, for us, for La Via Campesina, at least for La Via Campesina Europe, um, which is uh, an, a broad network of peasant of farmers and peasant and farmers organizations, um, agroecology is a way to confront the multiple crises we are in right now. Right now we are in a social crisis, we are in an ecological crisis, we do have the climate crisis, and to confront those crises we need a different model of production and a different system how we produce food. Agroecology is not just a set of techniques how to produce food, it's much more. For us it's a, it's a transformation of the system, it's a way of change. Agroecology is for us um, understood as part of the of a broader concept called food sovereignty and, and it's basically the right of peoples so not just of people but of peoples uh, to decide themselves how food should be produced how food should be distributed by whom for whom and for whose needs we produce this food we try to have or to reach not just food that's produced good food that's produced for everybody and and to a, to a price everybody can afford but it's also contributing to global justice, uh, global social justice. Um, basically, it's about taking the needs of people, of peoples, into the center of the food system. <laughs>